a legal practitioner, Mr. Libora Sushoma, joins us live to give perspectives on some of the issues uh, today. We'd like to thank you for joining us on the program. My pleasure, Liz. Just before we dwell into the reasons why um, the Supreme Court has adjourned that date, I want to quickly get your thoughts, because the Never Again conference is taking place today. Uh, this week, 50 um, years since the Civil War, especially, you know, um, two to three years uh, that it was fought. And a lot of people are looking back. Um, it's also interesting. We have so many um, key cultural and political figures who are attending that conference who are saying these conversations need to be had. They've talked about, um, for example, the chairman of Indigo Lagos, Professor Anya Oaya, who's chairing the summit, says the greatest tragedy is that what happened uh, to Nigeria is not learning from history. In your opinion, would you say that we're learning from our past mistakes? To answer your question directly, unfortunately, no. Uh, because um, the events that led to the civil war are still very, very much with us and even more conspicuous now than ever before. And um, um, you have a lot of people uh, who also were told stories of the war. And then majority of our young people today were not around when these wars were fought, when this war was fought. And a lot of them now, unfortunately, history is no longer taught the way it used to be. The narratives are the, different. Yes, the narratives are different. And, 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 and now, with um, uh, uh, politics also, we are largely divided much more than we were when you know we're under the military and and so if care is not taken if these issues are not addressed and if, if these stories are not retold we might just be gradually gravitating towards another one so that's why it is timely also 50 years after the war it's you know a milestone how how well have we fared and then what we sh should we be doing to avoid you know another crisis and, 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 and so it's a very welcome development. All right, let's go into um, awaiting the Supreme Court verdict which was shifted to tomorrow. The reason of, you know, ill health, the ill member of the panel, shouldn't we have been told of this before uh, this very day? Yeah, um, unfortunately, maybe, maybe the, the panel member that wrote you know, maybe one or two of the lead judgment. If he is the panel member that wrote, I, I would also would not um, want to say that all the judgments were written by one panel member. And, and so, um, it's not in all cases. I think that's for me, it's a too lame an excuse for adjourning the matter to tomorrow. Um, that a member of the panel, you know, ill health on, you know, if a member of the panel, because there are more than uh, one appeals, and then, and, and so, um, and in some cases, I've also handled matters at the election petition tribunal, and in some cases, if it's um, the provided that um, the member that is absent had, you know, uh, beforehand had the benefit of reading through the judgment and either consented or dis dissented, you know, against our judgment. And, and so it's really immaterial whether he's... Um, but isn't you know, there like a minimum of justices that should sit... To hear the appeal to, yes. and not to deliver judgment. judgment. Uh, to well, hear the appeal. Also, there have been talks of security in several parts of some of the states. For example, Sokoto, there was really a press statement yesterday uh, from the Commissioner of Police as to um, security with regards to this hearing today. It's also interesting that this is coming now, um, seeing as we're, we're... I mean, the elections are over and this is just, you know, an, a hearing. But when you hear that, you know, security agencies are taking this extra measures what does that say about our, our democracy at this exactly. time exactly so you, our democracy you know is in three phases the primaries and then campaigns and then the election proper the last phase is you know what you have at the tribunals and then you know you know the kind of politics will play here politics here is a do or die thing and, and so um, and the way sometimes even the way we celebrate uh, political judgment uh, and so that's why um, it's not a place for the police you know to be very ready to nip any crisis in the board because uh, but unfortunately because of um, also the prevailing issues and then unfortunately also like um, the the way you know um, uh, the, pol the, the political climate that we find ourselves. So it is very common for people to also want to presume that maybe the judgment would go, you know, either way. And but uh, it's it's not the first time, really, uh, when there are landmark judgments like this. The police will always, 
you know, ensure that adequate security is um, provided. And then also there's need for the politicians involved to also, you know, uh, talk to their supporters to remain calm, you mm. know, irrespective of, of uh, the, the outcome judgment. of such judgment. That's true. Would you say that the Supreme Court is overburdened, justices of the Supreme Court? Yes, yes, yes. Because um, I, I, let me quickly, for lack of time, you have in Lagos, for example, for example, you have about 70 something courts, high courts. All the appeals from these high courts flows to just, you know, two um, uh, court of appeal rooms but with various panels. And then you have up to about um, 30 or 28 court of appeals in Nigeria. And appeals from all of this court goes to just one Supreme Court with, you know, maybe a panel of, um, you have three, you know, chambers. And, and, and so imagine cases from all of this. And then now you have political cases because every time there is election preparation for election, after election, you have a body with, you know, so many frivolous and, you know, meritorious, you know, political cases. And, and, and so I think our Supreme Court have a body. That's why, even as I speak to you, the Court of Appeals are given dates as far as uh, 2023, you know. So for so matters that ordinarily ought to be heard expeditiously. So how do we unbundle this? Yeah, um, I listened to um, Professor Skiamo during um, uh, his screening, uh, ministerial screening, and he did make some quite... Uh, a laudable, you know, suggestions that it is not every appeal that should go to Supreme Court. And since we say we're practicing a federal system of government, I think there's need for us to look at, you know, align states, you know, or regions to have regional Supreme Court. So some appeals should end at the regional Supreme Court, you know, so that you don't, not every, you know, matter, uh, somebody stole a, a chicken and then you are disputing the appeal. It, go, it ends up in Supreme Court. You know, so there should be regional Supreme Court that, you know, appeals, some matters should end there. It is when it has to do with, you know, serious constitutional crisis or, you know, uh, federal government uh, issues quickly, that it should go to, you know, the federal Supreme Court. Let's quickly go to um, the life pension. I mean, Sarah has indeed initiated approach the federal high court to order 36 yeah. state governors, former uh, governors as well, uh, pension uh, breakdown. Um, under our laws, um, are they required to publish this? Um, you see, first and foremost, let's quickly look at um, the Code of Conduct um, um, Amendment Act. It's right there in the fifth schedule, part one of the 1999 Constitution. If you look at paragraph four, sub one uh, B, it says, a public officer shall not, after his retirement for public service, and while receiving pension from public funds, accept more than one remunerative position as chairman, director, employee, of any public authority or government owned or, con or government owned or controlled by the government. And, and so first, if you look at, you have the Senate being a retirement home for most of our former governors. And then there is need, if we're talking about transparency and accountability in government, there's need for the Attorney General of the Federation to find out the moment there are allegations that some former governors who are senate, senators or, or ministers are still drawing pensions from their state's funds, there's need for the attorney general to investigate such matters. And if found to be truth, publish the names of such former governors and then also approach the court to dispute why they should continue to collect. Uh, but in, in, I also, it was for me, it was uh, laughable and um, a surreptitious attempt to support impunity when I read this, the position of the Attorney General in this Serap matter, mm. that since the matters are state law, uh, state, since the, the laws are state laws, mm. uh, duly passed, that he has no right uh, or no powers to... to uh, approach the court to confront. Unfortunately, you know. we're out of time on this, but we'll definitely invite you again uh, no to talk to us about this matter. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Laboris Sashoma, for joining us. Pleasure.